I hope I hope to cover with all of you today. Um, of course, I'm going to formally introduce myself, um, define an ERG and why they're important. Of course, we'll get to the meat of how to engage ERG. And that's when I say engage, that means if you want to engage with ERGs that are existing or you want to engage in a way that's new, meaning helping to build or develop an ERG. We're also gonna talk about why that's important. And through it all, out of all of this, I am going to have a do's and don'ts slide. That's, that's very important. And hopefully that resonates with a lot of you. Either it's, oh, I didn't know that, I didn't consider that, or it's a refresher for others. Of course, at the end, I will have an opportunity for questions and answers. However, we do have a chat feature, I do believe at the bottom of the screen. So if there's something that resonates or a question that you really have, don't um, be hesitant to put something in the chat. Um, Amber's helping us out today by um, taking a look at that chat and calling out things um, that may happen. Um, my goal for this is not just to dump a lot of information on you. My hope is that you'll leave with new information, new excitement, um, or even refreshers on ways to engage and explore, and most of all, continue that conversation about employee resource groups. So welcome. Going to the next slide, again, I'm Hope Lenore. I am the founder and owner of Rise and Fly. It is a career organization for career consulting and career development. Uh, what's different here, what our main focus is, is putting the right people in the right places with the diversified set of skills. First, by identifying their professional and spiritual purpose, knowing how that aligns, and then making sure they're discovering ways to engage that purpose or that skill and strength in the right places, whether that's for development or building mobility, laterally, vertically. Um, also, that means that I am highly involved in diversity, equity, and inclusion, because with that comes um, inclusion and not just hiring for diversity. What you see at the bottom of the screen is just ways to connect with me. Here's my website, hopelenore.com. Um, I also have riseandfly.net. I am the author of Workday Catalyst, which gives daily tips um, on ways to um, engage and grow in your career. And here are some other social media platforms that I'm on. So now that you know me, let's get into it. It looks like everybody has the capability to unmute themselves if they want. So here's a, a great time to unmute yourself. I'm interested in knowing what is an ERG? Anyone here already know what an ERG is? Well, typically they are. Go ahead. Ross, I think you have the floor. Okay, I, have a, I saw Donna, but typically <laughs> they're an internal um, kind of a snapshot of a group of people that can represent staff across diversity, diverse lenses, diverse voices, um, representing the organization and can provide valuable feedback for an EDI strategic action plan to move forward, you know, with those initiatives within the organization. Awesome. Donna, anything that you'd like to add? Yes, and that um, normally it's focused on um, a specific group of people to some degree, whether it's uh, you know, uh, by function or race or gender or di other differences. So in addition to uh, what she shared normally, you're, you're basically forming the employee resource group. You know, anybody can attend and join it, but it's to really make sure that there is equity um, and inclusion for a certain group of people. Thank you, Donna. Cindy, I did see your hand. I think I lost you. Perhaps you put your hand down. Did you have additional things that you'd like to share? Um, I don't have a lot other than I, I use our ERGs um, as a problem solving um, resource for, I had a situation where a woman of color got triggered in one of my trainings 
and I'm white and she did not come to me. And um, so I did get a hold of one of my uh, BIPOC leaders and, and had them work with her a little bit, but then also what are we gonna do as an agency to provide a safety net of uh, uh, resources for our people of color or our queer folks or whoever, if they get triggered, what are we going to, what sort of safety system are we going to have in place? So I, I use them as a resource myself for problem solving. Fantastic. Of course, you are all correct. So I hope everyone else on the call got something for that. What is an ERG? Here's a yeah. simple. Oh, we yeah. have some, uh, we have some comments in the chat. If I can go okay. ahead to answer your question. Um, Lisa shared employee resource group, Paola, I apologize if I said your name wrong, employee resource groups are groups of employees who come together based on shared characteristics or life experiences. Um, we have Kath, we have Catherine, Catherine, the ERG can also serve as a resource to the organization to support its mission and provide insight into how best to include employees with specific characteristics and or life experiences. Um, we also have a couple of people saying that the sound is going in and out um, on their end. Um, so I don't know if you could adjust the volume on your end, Hope. Um, yep, so I'm gonna, gonna raise my volume up. I don't know if that helps or not, but I am going to raise my volume get a little closer to my mic, perhaps that helps. Um, I can hear all of you clearly, but yeah, continue to let me know if I'm if I'm going in and out. Thanks, Roz. Good, good um, Kimberly, yes. At the end, you will receive a copy of the slides. Fantastic. Um, thank you again for all of your engagement. So here's a snapshot of what, um, how to define or how ERGs or employee resource groups are defined. By the way, moving forward, I may refer to it in the acronym ERGs. They are also called business resource groups or inclusion council. And that's for similar reasons that um, Cindy talked about. Employee resource group are a group of individuals with common demographics, identities, backgrounds. These are all things that you all have said. And here's some examples there, there can be um, African-American, employee resource group, Asian, Hispanic, relating to gender identity or ability. And I use ability, what you'll often hear is disability, uh, but we all have a different type of ability. So I go with ability. Um, there may be veterans groups or groups related to social, uh, sexual, sorry, orientation. By the way, ERGs are voluntarily led for those of you who don't know. So these are associates who's volunteering their time in this particular group. We're gonna talk more about um, leadership and sponsorship engagement as well. They too are volunteers for these groups. So they are not getting paid uh, money to lead or engage or help develop these particular groups. By the way, employee resource groups are not social or special interest groups. That is very different. Now, though these groups may engage in social activity or some type of special interest as well, this is not what an ERG is all about. So why are they important? You all have already shared um, why you believe they're important or why you know they're important. So they are all correct. So I'm just gonna, speed through this really quickly, but if I'm going too fast or you want me to slow down so you can learn more, um, just let me know. So 90% of our Fortune 500 companies have ERGs. So they're Fortune 500 companies, they have ERGs. <laughs> Let's make the connection. There are some benefits to actually engaging ERGs in their company, as we can see. Um, one of them is market growth. So we, we talked about that when I asked the question, what is an ERG? And one of the things you said is here are some benefits from having an ERG and one is um, market growth and identifying gaps in the market. So an ERG has that capability to say, you know what, here's a gap now, but they also have the capability to say, by the way, here's a gap that's gonna happen in the future if we don't go ahead and, and cover this or talk about that or consider 
um, innovative ideas in order to fill that particular gap. So yes, they are great, uh, great resources. Turnover rate. Why is it important? Turnover rate, as most of you know, is very high. It could cost thousands of dollars, especially for large, large organizations to hire, then someone leave, and then you promote and hire someone else and onboard or train someone else. So ERGs are very, very helpful when reducing uh, the turnover rates in organizations. Again, they are great resources for identifying the gaps or identifying ways to make um, the organization feel more inclusive or new hires to feel more comfortable um, or knowledgeable. By the way, I, I missed this one earlier, but the census, that's another thing that we should consider. Um, we all should know that minorities will become the majority in 2044. So that's another way of here's a market gap or here's something that we need to be aware of. Let's use our ERG resources in order to identify opportunities to fill the gap. And satisfaction. Employee satisfaction um, is definitely important and that goes back to retention. Are our employees satisfied? And if they're satisfied, it not only helps with retention, it also helps with productivity. So here's some ways that employee resource groups help with that. 70% um, of organizations surveyed, and this is with the human resource management organization, um, relied on ERGs to build positive workforce dynamic. 90% um, of ERGs work to help make new hires more comfortable. And then there's collaboration and innovation. So not operating in a silo because you identify as a certain way or you feel uncomfortable because ERGs will definitely or can help uh, with these types of challenges. I am going to go more in depth in these as we move forward um, in the following slide. And that goes back to, RISE goes back to challenges. Um, ERGs help address these challenges in candidate recruitment and retention. I remember working for a company that was huge on uh, diversity. This was more than 10 years ago. And the company said, well, we just don't have black people or African-American people to apply. So that's why we have mostly um, candidates who are white. And they were going to different institutions. They meaning that company was going to dis different institutions, building relationships and recruiting on career days and having speeches, et cetera. So my response to them was, well, we have to ask why. Why aren't candidates um, that are from that are African American or Black applying for these positions? Have you considered that it's the institution or the colleges that you're actually going to? There's an opportunity to use the African American ERG in your organization to have relationships or build relationships with HBCUs or historically black colleges and universities. That's a way to actually get on the radar. And of course they said, that's great, why don't you go? And I did. <laughs> and one of the things I discovered is that students um, at that institution did had no idea what that company was or what they were about. So using the ERG to say, hey, I raised my hand, I'll go to these institutions and talk more about our companies and why it's a great place to be, would be another way to address issues like that. Here's the next slide. Here's, um, I, I purposely didn't say, here's a checklist because it shouldn't be assumed that you should go through this list and check off everything. And it's like, great, I've created an ERG or great, I'm engaged in an ERG in the right way. But here's a, a referral list, um, things to think about as you're hoping to engage in an ERG. On the right, you see, um, three simple circles, employee, employer, and external. When we engage with ERGs, we have to remember that it's not just about the employee. It's not just about the employer. And it's not just about the external brand that the company makes. 
Um, by the way, I forgot to mention that um, the first ERG was established as a caucus, by the way, in the 1960s. The former COE of Xerox was actually the person that helped build this particular uh, caucus or ERG with African American employees. At that time, that was when the a riot was happening in uh, Rochester, New York. And what he wanted to do was to address the challenges um, in working at Xerox for uh, Black employees. So yes, Xerox was hiring Black employees, but there were some challenges and some hesitancies uh, for those employees. And he wanted to make sure that those were addressed. So going back to uh, the checklist, know the internal culture. Whether you're hoping to build an ERG or create an ERG or engage in an ERG, understand what the culture is like. So thinking, oh, I'm just gonna attend and sit in meetings or talk or listen virtually, um, understand why, why the ERG was created or why it should be created. What's happening at that company um, to help build the story about why this um, ERG or potential ERG is important. So definitely consider that. Um, and for introverts like myself, <laughs> we still have to go out, be aware and listen. Be aware of the public employer data. So the culture is one thing, the data, the numbers um, is another thing. So when you're thinking about an ERG, if you're creating one, it's, I want to create an ERG for African-American women because they are not being hired by my company. How do you know that? What does that look like? Because you may be surprised when you get the numbers that, you know what, 60% of our company are made up of African-American women. Or you may notice, I'm right, only 3% of our company is made up of African-American women. And that's just one point of data. There are other things to look for when you're thinking about why. So know what the public employer data is. And I say that specifically public because I don't want to get the impression that we're sneaking around and getting information that employees don't uh, publicly give about themselves. And that is the case for organizations where um, some employees just don't feel comfortable revealing all of themselves or who they are. Know the external culture and climate. So the past three years for some and a lifetime for others, there have been a lot of very intense moments, including George Floyd, Asian violence on Asian and Asian Americans. Um, know what that culture is like, because as we engage with ERGs, we want to be aware. Will we know the whole thing? And are we experts at everything? No. But being aware that this is happening and acknowledging it means a lot to the members of the ERG or those that you're hoping to be an ally with or engage with or even learn. Showing that you're aware of what's happening external and it's not just an internal silo that you're hoping to support or be a part of means a lot to those who are engaged. And it's gonna certainly help the um, membership grow, but it's also gonna help the business grow. So what's happening in the news? And some of us don't like to watch news. That can be very intense. What's happening on social media? There's some great groups to join where these conversations are happening. Um, what are our clients asking for? Do we have what it is that they're asking for? Do our clients prefer to work with a company that hires and support diverse groups? That's something else to consider. Do we know that? I hope that all of us understand that there are some potential clients that just won't work with organizations because of who they are, who they hire, what they believe in. It's just a no for them. And we should be aware of what that is like externally. Vocalize a clear mission and impact. This is for those of us who want to create an employee resource group. Um, we need to be very clear on what our mission is and how it's going to impact or influence not just the employee, employer, 
the employee and also externally, how's that going to impact the brand? My, my suggestion is to be very specific. So for example, um, this organization may be simply to support the employee. It may be for professional development for the employees in this group. It may be awareness um, for the employer or externally or just for everyone. So ERGs don't all have the same mission. So please don't mistake that I'm an ERG and my mission is the same as all other ERGs. We want to make everyone aware of the challenges that we face. Maybe that's not the case. Maybe the mission is to help members of this group professionally develop and maybe mobilize within the company. And again, maybe it's to support um, our, our employees or employer. And it may also be to fill gaps and help with branding. Identify ERG roles and guidelines. Again, this is for those who are interested in creating ERGs. Who do you reach out to? Who do you designate a role to for impact? Um, and who do you, so, and, and for those, I have to say, for those of us who already know there's an ERG out there, but we have an idea for that ERG, who it is that you reach out to. So if you're interested in having something, let's say like a speed mentoring program, so that members of that group can make connections, build relationships with leaders in the organization. You may not need to reach out to the president or the leader of that ERG. There may be a specific role like someone with professional development who you should reach out to specifically. So know that there's an ERG, know what the roles are in that ERG. If you're creating the role, if you're creating the ERG, know what roles you wanna play or have based on the mission and the impact that you wanna make. I see a lot of heads moving, a lot of writing going on. Again, don't hesitate to put something in the chat or unmute your mic if you have a question or something that you want to add or say. Understand what the ERG will help solve. That's the what's in it for me or what's in it for them situation. Not just an ERG, just to be an ERG. What is it going to solve? Align with the company goals. Again, not just to have an ERG, to have an ERG or because everybody else or every other company has an ERG. Make sure that whatever you're doing aligns with the company goals because this makes the ERG a part of the company. It's a relationship that the company can build with the ERG, they should be one. Um, so make sure that you align with the appropriate goals. This helps for organizations, especially over the past two years or so, who said, we're going to invest in diversity and inclusion. Great, how? Here's an ERG's um, opportunity to help that goal um, invest in specific ways in building and engaging diversity, equity, and inclusion. Amanda, hey, yeah. We have a um, we have a couple comments in the chat. Okay. Okay. We have Kimberly. She said, "Could you speak more on um, rapid mentoring?" And then we also have Lise. How directive should the company be about the focus of the ERGs or should they get to choose their own impact? Yep. Um, so I'll answer the second one first. Um, the, company, mm -hmm. the company should definitely play a part and we'll talk about that with leadership and sponsorship later. Uh, but remember, these are employee-led um, groups. So it's up to the employee and the leaders that support them and those they reach out to to help have a clear mission and impact. So it's not a, because the company says I should, it's more of as an ERG, we want to support the company by X, Y, Z or support the employees of our company by X, Y, Z. For the first one about speed mentoring, um, I remember doing a speed mentor, mentoring program where it's similar to speed dating, However, these are leaders in the organization to give you a visual sitting at, sitting at different tables, waiting for associates after, um, I think I did three minutes, after three minutes, 
to move to their table, introduce themselves, practice their um, elevator pitch, uh, which I went into, let's not make it a script, this, this is about you, and seeing if this is a good connection to find an, a mentor type of mentor mentee type of relationship or reverse mentor mentee type of relationship and they had scorecards and everything and after three minutes introducing themselves chatting maybe answering a question or two that was important to them they move on to the next table where there's another um, leader there ready to meet them we also have another um comment from cindy she said she, she would love to have a mentoring group for our peers and for those who don't know how to move up in the agency. The agency really struggles with time, both as an excuse and as a stress factor. Any suggestions? So um, I guess I wasn't clear on the question or the ask for that particular one. Is it how to build mentor programs or how to... Yes, I'm struggling with finding mentors that have the time to meet with our young uh, employees, our peers, and time is a real factor. It's also an excuse. It's also how, what, what do we prioritize and so forth. Um, I think organizations, it's one of the ways they check the box is mm -hmm. we've got a diversity committee. That's great. And now I'm too busy to do anything else. Um, so I'm just wondering, and it takes a lot of time to mentor. So or it, in theory, it does. Um, so I'm just wanting some suggestions. Yep. Um, so the way that an ERG is helpful, so speed uh, mentoring is mm -hmm. a good way. You, let me have an hour and you can talk to 15 associates. Thank you for your time. We appreciate that. But it's also ERGs that can help design um, mentor programs. And they don't have to be formal. One of the things, let me first say that time is an investment. And for those of us who are very interested in supporting as a mentor, anyone, we will find the time and we can be very creative in doing that. Oftentimes when programs are very structured, that can feel like this is going to take so much time because I have to meet with this person once a week, for an hour, every week. There are programs that can be more casual where there's more of a, here's an introduction to introduce you as mentor, mentee, and the both of you set your time. It may be when a problem comes and that may be very uh, difficult or self selfish, or it may be once a quarter. It may be come to me when you have something to celebrate and I'm going to give you on fee feedback on how to grow. 30 minutes, an hour. It just depends on how that, that particular thing is structured. And again, how committed and jazzed um, leaders or anyone is about being a mentor. There's time there. Um, there are creative ways to do that, whether it's as your mentor, I want you to come and help with this project. That's, you've got two things going on. You've gotten help because you, you think you don't have time. You're getting help for something that you do every day or come here. Why don't you just shadow me and see what mm -hmm. I do or what my associates do. That's another great mentor move that's not only helping with visibility, but it's helping with experience. Great Thank question. You. Yeah. Um, and Cindy, I think Amber's going to, to share my information after all of this is over. And you and I, I would, I would be happy to connect with you um, if you want to, to chat or, or have coffee talk over Zoom more. I'm not sure where you're located. Thank you so much. That'd be great. You're welcome. All right. Great questions. Thanks for the comments, everyone. Next one, know the company commitments. Um, we... We, I talked about aligning with company goals and I, I, I suggested a little bit, my goal as a company may be to engage more in diversity, equity, and inclusion. We're gonna do that. We've got a whole letter and we posted it on LinkedIn and told the world what's the actual commitments. So know what commitments, what steps the company is actually gonna to take to make that happen because that's another way to engage in ERG or to share ideas with ERGs to help the company meet that, those goals or even design what those commitments are, to share those ideas because um, companies definitely do value um, employee resource groups or they absolutely should. We're gonna get into that more because not all ERGs um, at companies run perfectly and it's so awesome. We've heard stories where it's, it, it's absolutely the reverse, but we'll talk about those. 
activate leadership, sponsorship. Though this is employee-led, employees should not be left out there to just do everything with no support. And when I say support, I mean physically, I mean mentally, um, the support from the leadership team. Here's an opportunity for leaders to be an ally for what this particular ERG is hoping to accomplish and what they need, and they can be a voice. Having leadership voice, we all know it means a lot. Um, depending on the culture of the organization, it can change the whole dynamic to have a leader um, speak on behalf of that particular ERG. And then their sponsorship, and I, I put the slash there, to me, sponsorship is very different than just leadership. Someone to say, hey, I am the leader supporting this particular ERG. Sponsors are actually putting their name and in some cases their career on the line to say, I think you need to reach out to the Asian employee resource group. You need to bring those leaders in here to solve this particular problem. Yes, they need to be at this table to give us ideas to move forward. So those are the ones who have the influence to help make change happen or to build the, the mission and the impact that the ERG is designed to make or needed. Maybe they didn't know that they're needed in that, but the sponsor or the leader is there to help. Plan for consistent engagement. So once a year, the ERG has this big blowout extravagant event that helps everyone know um, there should be consistent engagement uh, for ERGs, um, whether that is professional development. It could be resume writing if the mission of that ERG is to help develop and support uh, members of their group. It could be communication skills if they're looking to build their EQ skills or be a better strategist and communicate their ideas to leadership teams or other groups across the business. It could be um, leadership development. It could be um, any other challenges that they have because of what's happening, ex happening externally um, in their personal lives. It could be what's happening externally that has affected the business and the brand of the business. Um, so constantly be ready to have consistent engagement. That sounds funny. Constantly be consistent <laughs> in engagement. Here's the next one. Engage employees in, with excellent communication and EQ skills. So those are the ones that um, you want to support as they're on the floor. They're on the front lines. These are the people that can have um, a huge impact on how successful the employee resource groups are. Perhaps you notice who they are. Perhaps you are uh, one of them. Use those communication skills to build what that particular group is all about and what they hope to accomplish and the connection they hope to make with the senior leadership team and the company brand. Use those people and perhaps they can be have a role, communication role perhaps um, as part of the ERG. Let me also say this, when, when identifying roles and using skills of employees or even leaders, Here's an opportunity to build um, their resume too. So perhaps they are the leader of professional development or they're the leader of communication or they're the leader of event planning. Here's another resume builder to say, you've done this for this group. However, it impacted our entire organization this way. So that's huge. That's something to consider as well. Have support champions. So those are the people that may be extroverts, very vocal, very visible. Those are people that are always on the floor showing support for this particular group. It's okay to have these people on your radar and engage them and engage with them in ERGs. Hey, hey Hope, we have a couple comments in the chat. Okay. Okay. Um, Catherine, I appreciate Hope comment that mentor programs don't have to be structured. An idea that came from her response is to use ERG to have sessions from leaders and educate ERG members on how to initiate an informal mentoring relationship. Mm -hmm. From Alex, question for those, hopefully I didn't miss this if it was covered already. Who are, who are also already doing informal mentorship programs via ERGs 
how are you measuring its success if it's not a part of a formal program? And then we have Desiree. I don't work for Target. However, a great example of how to expand a statement into these actions are including leveraging ERGs. And she provided a link. Awesome. Thank you for providing that link. So I'm interested to see uh, what our what our colleagues say in this group. So when I, but when I say informal, maybe I should have said structured. So structured in the sense that you know exactly when you're going to have your one-on-one -on -one <coughs> with your mentor, excuse me. Um, unstructured, meaning that I don't know when my next one-on-one -on -one with my mentor will be, but I know he, she, or they are available and I can reach out to them via email or an Outlook invite to say, hey, I would love to talk to you. For example, I just applied for this position. I would love your help on how I intend to approach the interview. Or I've gotten this feedback from one of the leaders about a project I was working on. I would love to talk to you on Thursday if you can give me some insight on how I should move forward. Is this something you think I should accept or is this something that you think I should say thank you very much um, and move forward? Sorry. <clears throat> Any colleagues have things they want to share? I actually have um, some questions, but um, my main my main concern right now with my organization it's a new organization that I'm with. Uh, the culture is frankly a mess. It is completely a mess. Their ERGs are. Basically, as you mentioned in the beginning, they shouldn't be social clubs. They are social clubs that have kind of been running wild and free. They have funds in which they just do whatever with whenever, however. And from what I've seen, I can't really connect it back to anything. I don't see how they're moving their so-called causes any further. And I certainly am not seeing alignment with the business. My question is these ERGs for this company that I recently joined have been this way, I want to say, for maybe two, three years. What are your suggestions of basically reining them back at this point? Because there has been no structure or accountability. So that's my question. Yeah, thanks, Maggie. It goes back to planning, right? So getting them back together and um, not... <clears throat> Um, oh, this is wrong, which I know you don't do, Maggie, but getting them back together and actually planning. Well, let's, as we move forward, here's a great opportunity for us to strategize, practice our planning strategy, et cetera, skills. Um, let's talk about our mission. What is our mission to move forward? Okay, who's interested in budgeting? How can we use our budget to then make sure that we're um, impacting and according to our mission in a way that's measurable or that others can visibly see that there's a difference that we're making based on our mission. So that's an opportunity just to call the moment and to actually have that meeting. And in other cases, or plus have a survey or a focus group just to talk things out. And maybe it's not about planning. Maybe it's just talking through how people are feeling about what's going on and what they're getting out of that particular ERG. <clears throat> Maggie. Thank you so much. <laughs> and um, again, this is a new role, a new position, new company that I've just been with a few months. And it's so funny that initially you mentioned that VRGs aren't social groups. As I see on their, um, their website, there is actually an ERG that is called the social group. So I'm not exactly, they haven't initiated yet. They're still looking for members. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, okay, how am I gonna deal with this now? A social group ERG, it's, it's just to be social. It's, it, it's just a social group. So I'm like, oh, okay. And I think it goes back to the planning, no accountability. And there, there was no one to kind of rein them in. They were just trying to do everything at once and just give free reign and we're DEI and we're this and we're that. And there, there's just no strategizing there. And a social group now. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's interesting. Ask and be curious. Um, because one thing that you said is we're DEI. 
So maybe that's a question. Well, tell me more about that. How, how, what, at what aspect um, does this engage diversity, equity, and inclusion? I'm just curious, tell me more. And it may be, well, we thought we were social because we needed a way to uh, really stress about all the challenges we're facing. And that gives you an opportunity to dig into those challenges. So, so continue to, to, be, to be curious, Maggie. Here's, here's a great opportunity for you to actually help um, make things even, even better for the organization, for that ERG. Catherine, I see your hand up too. Catherine, are you? Awesome. I'm here, forgive me, my voice is gone. So I hope you could hear me. But I was thinking about someone who had asked about how would you measure an informal, not a structure, but an informal um, mentorship relationship or program. So I was thinking, what about culture? If you do culture surveys or employee engagement surveys and include questions in those surveys about, do you have a mentor? How does that and and you know are you using a mentor? Our questions are you know open-ended questions about how is that mentorship helping you, supporting you, and building your career or feeling included in the organization. So, what are your thoughts around that? I think that's great, especially if you you put that the purpose of this mentor program is to help more employees feel included. Um, to help more employees <clears throat> discover more about the company, to help employees feel more comfortable with public speaking, whatever the case may be. So when you do send that survey with those specific things, you're measuring, did you, do you feel more comfortable public speaking? Did you feel, do you now feel more included? Do you, so those are, those are simple ways to measure. There's also a mobility measure perhaps the purpose of the mentor program was for associates or employees to feel like they can move across the company, uh, whether that's up or actually across, up, across or up in the company um, vertically. Um, that's another thing that you can say, you can measure. And I've seen companies do that where they say 70% of the people actually change roles since being in a part of the mentor program. So that's another way to measure. Thanks for bringing that up, Catherine. Uh, Alex, I think you asked that question. Um, sorry, I missed out <clears throat> on addressing that one. Um, the last thing that I have here on this particular page, and believe me, I don't have 22 slides, so don't fret, <laughs> is strive to be an ally. And remember that an ally is not something that you can claim to be for yourself, right? I can't say, oh, I am an ally for you, Amber. No. Amber has to deem me an ally, but it doesn't mean I can't strive to be an ally. So as you're engaging in these ERGs, whether you're just, not just, whether you're a member or a leader or the um, creator of the ERG, um, always strive to be an ally for that particular ERG. Here's some do's and don'ts. I gave you a whole bunch of lists and hopefully you were able to capture some of the whys and the benefits of doing things this way. Um, I do want to point these out very specifically about the do's and don'ts. Um, and I'm gonna go really fast because perhaps we have more questions and more insights that everyone wants to share. But again, stop me at any time via chat or you can come off mute. Um, stay committed. It's not a one-time thing. This is a commitment that you're making. So whatever ERG is in, make sure that you feel the passion about it um, when you're engaging in the ERG. Keep learning. We're always changing. This world is always evolving from what we call ourselves to how we perceive ourselves or what we want to say. Um, there's, there, you have to keep learning. Um, keep growing and <laughs> growing your inclusive skills. Stay aware of the company dynamics and the external culture, et cetera. Again, things are always changing. And don't think just because I created the ERG or I became a member of the ERG this year, I'm good to go for my entire term with this company or my entire life, uh, wherever I am. You're always gonna have to remain aware and how to address these issues. Explore unaffiliated ERGs. Um, see how other ERGs are doing things. What programs are they creating and executing on? What connections are they making? What is their relationship like? Or what is it that I can learn about their particular identity 
um, as I continue to build my inclusive skills. Empower and include. Remember, that's a huge part of employee resource group is to empower and include. Track the accomplishments and awards. We all know this from our career that you should always keep track of, though we don't often like to because we don't want to seem selfish, track those accomplishments, no matter how big or small, even if it's an email uh, from someone that said, thank you for saying this during our meeting or Thank you for actually recognizing me when we were in that Zoom meeting and I'm always having my hand up and no one's calling them. Track that. That's a huge accomplishment. Or I've just been promoted to VP and I've been trying to do this for 15 years. Track those accomplishments, awards, whether it's internal or external. And stay connected with important stakeholders. Again, do not operate in a silo. You want to make sure that you have genuine, authentic relationships. Uh, with people who have influence to um, develop the culture or to make things happen. And that is including HR. It's hard to, for me to imagine any time when an ERG should not somehow be connected to HR um, because there are mental resources, they are physical resources, they are recruiting resources, retention resources, um, training development resources. So definitely stay um, connected somehow, even if it's just sending an article to a stakeholder, say, hey, I thought about you. Here's a cool article I read on CNN or Gardner or whatever, wherever you read that article that you know they're interested in. And all the don'ts together. Of course, don't be exclusive. So if you're part of an ERG group that you identify with, and someone who you think doesn't identify with that group decides to join, don't turn them away. Don't give them the funny face. Don't be exclusive. Everyone should be welcome to join that particular ERG. That's my opinion. Everyone should be welcome to join. Um, I'm certainly a believer in that. And don't retaliate. No matter what's said about your identity or the group's identity or what's happening in the world, don't retaliate. Don't use the ERG as a mechanism to retaliate. Don't engage in unedited messaging, no matter what's happening. And I know um, some of us have, have gotten to the point of, you know what, just, just do it, just send that email, just, you know, just, I encourage you not to do that. Be very thoughtful about the things that you say, the messages that you send about anything that's happening in the organization um, or outside of the organization. Even if it's to support, I shouldn't say even, if it's to support the ERG, you still, you don't want to retaliate. You don't want to say something that's not inclusive in your messaging. And if you don't associate, don't make it about you. It's great to join the ERG groups. For example, I am not a veteran. And I was a believer um, in companies joining all ERG groups because there's something to learn. But let's, you know, for example, the veteran ERG group I didn't go in saying, hey, I'm not a veteran, but I think you should do this. And by the way, when you message about this war, you should write this email to all the members. And have y'all haven't even thought about, mm -mm, it's not about me. It's about those in the group who are veterans or are part of the military. Instead, go with the approach of, I'm here to learn. And what you will find when you join ERG groups um, where you don't apparently or visibly um, seem to identify. Um, and in cases where you do, they often ask because they are curious. Tell us more about why you joined this group. We'd love to learn about what brought you here. Be prepared with that learning mentality. I am here to learn. I am here to support. Or my hope is to eventually become an ally for your group. So take that approach. Hi, hey, this is Barbara, Barbara Graham from Hackensack Meridian Health. And, um, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but I wanted to express something that I've been experiencing, um, particularly with the veterans and our pride and ally group, which is the LGBTQ plus community. So you're right. If you're not a part of the community or a part of the group and you're here to learn and to understand and to help them um, navigate throughout the organization because the organization has sanctioned these groups to be a part of and help with the mission and vision of the organization. 
but some really do have some biases because if you're not a part of their community, they don't really want to hear anything that you have to say. And a lot of that is, I, I understand that, help me understand, but as the lead, um, project lead for the groups, I am also to help them stay on track and be, you know, and whatever their goals and objectives are has to align with the organization. And sometimes it is not, and they want to have a little bias against that because I am not of the community of veterans or of the LGBT community. So how can you help me um, come across to them that although I am not, I am still your ally and I am here to help you. I'm also your ally for the organization to help you achieve your goals and mission. Yep, so again, it goes about them. So I, I wouldn't say I am your ally. I would respond, maybe change it a bit. I hope to become your ally. I hope to support you. I hope to give you perspective or help you make connections that I have that maybe you don't have right now. Um, so that's, that's an option of a way to approach. I do believe that there are many cases where it's great to have a lead or a sponsor of an ERG group that does not identify because they are going to support in a very different way as an ally or as a sponsor, especially as a leader of impact or influence at the table. And that's what you give, but it goes back to those words um, and those EQ skills of, I am here to learn and support. Um, tell me how you would like me to support your mission to do ABC. Again, you're bringing back that mission to them. <laughs> like, this is what you said, no, don't say it. but this is what you said you wanted to do. How can I help you um, make an impact or get through with this mission? And if it gives you concern, ask those questions, why? Tell me more about why you would like to do it that way. Okay, I understand. You know what? I just talked to him and her and I realized that they're really influenced if you do X, Y, Z. Have you considered... So it's more of a conversation, not a, you're doing it wrong. It's more of, I'm here to support you and give you a different type of perspective. And hopefully my influence can help you make the change that you need or develop in the way that you need. Yeah. But again, it's, it's not about those of us who don't associate. It's about those and that and there are things that we're not going to understand until we're continue to be more curious and ask the question a lot <clears throat> but yes it can be frustrating for the members of the group um, and sometimes they don't always show neither do leaders you know the right way we have to work to figure it out I hope that was helpful <laughs> Yes and no, because <laughs> okay. yeah, yeah, and we can certainly talk about this offline if you don't mind me, maybe just sure. talking to you on a, another level, so I don't want to interrupt too much, but sure. yeah, um, thank you. No worries, so here's here's the good news, we have about six minutes left, is that good news? I hope it's good news for you all. Uh, thanks so much for listening um, all this time, again, my goal was hopefully to give you new information or to get you even more excited, excited about um, engaging ERGs and, and how to support them. Again, my information will be shared with you by Amber after this session, probably later today, tomorrow, sometime this week. Um, before we go, other questions um, that you have about anything that I presented or thoughts about ERGs that we can discuss or address? All right, everybody, thank you again. Uh, were you gonna say something, Amber? Actually, yes. I did, hi. Um, can I ask a question? So I know we were talking about making the ERGs, um, you know, inclusive, letting people, you know, be part of it, but how do you also make it a um, safe space for people to be able, because part of have, sometimes having those ERGs is to have that safe space to be able to, um, discuss some of the challenges they might be having and know that there's other people around them that are uh, experiencing them too. Um, yeah. So when you're allowing everyone to be part of that conversation, how do you how do you create the safe space also in that conversation? That's a great question. So from my experiences, there have been times when ERGs separate the public events from the more intimate type of events. So deliberately saying, hey, 
let's have a speed network and everybody's invited, you're welcome. Or we're gonna have a conversation about what happened to George Floyd and how that impacts us. Everybody is welcome. Let's have that discussion and how we can move forward here in our company. And then there's the, all right, we're having this moment where we just want a certain group to come and really share their story and in a way that they feel with they can identify with the people there and they feel comfortable being very open and transparent about what's going on. So there's those private conversations or meetings, um, I should say, and there is a way to do that um, in the company on company time. There are ways to do that. And then there, was the, there are those public conversations um, that everyone feels very included in. Yeah, so it's, it's a possibility. It's just not a matter of always being private and exclusive and what it is and the goals and mission that the ERG is hoping to uh, drive. Yeah. 